Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where today we are into episode four of Healthy Masculinity, thanks to two very talented authors uh, that we've been privileged to meet and uh, uh, get to know. Uh, and um, what's today's topic all about, John? Well, this is interesting because uh, these guys have written a great book called Power Tools for Men, if I can get it into the picture. And they've got eight basic dimensions of masculinity, um, healthy masculinity, because after all, in today's world, men are fighting the negative image of toxic masculinity. And it's a shame that somebody came up with that uh, term because it diminishes men in general. And of course, if you diminish men, my opinion is you're also diminishing the people who love them, women who love them, among others, and parents and others. Um, and I think society is made up of men, women, children, fill in the blank. None of us should be diminished. We should all be loved and appreciated for who we are. And we should all be able to develop to our fullest. That's kind of what this book is all about. It's the idea that they've come up with um, a, um, what do you call it, a, 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 a phrase, classics, um, C-L-A-S-S-I-C-S. -S -S -S. Oh, each one stands for one of their power tools, right? And the power tools are things like love and connection. And so far, we've heard three of their um, detailed analyses. And I'm looking forward to this one, the first of the S's, if you will, in, in classics. Um, but the important thing is that when you listen to these guys, uh, the authors, Leonard Simchek and Rick Bronick, um, I want you to recognize that these guys have uh, not only come up with what I think is a very simple but detailed explanation how men in today's society can be themselves and be uh, loved and love w without all the negativity that society wants to throw at us. But they're experts in the field. They've been doing this. Each of them have been doing what I think we call men's issues, men's seminars and lecturing and um, training sessions, things like that, and certainly writing books on the subject for well over 25 years, maybe, um, maybe as much as 40 years. We, they can tell us about their history. But it's you're getting information that is really valuable in a in a method that is kind of easy to accept power tools and uh i just i'm loving this because when they wrote the book and 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 i've read most of the book um i'm trying to keep up with our series um when i read the book i thought to myself this stuff has to be on video we need to get these guys to open up and tell us about the details of this, a power tool by ta power tool, if you will, uh, section by section. So that's what we're doing. We're up to number four, um, spirituality. Is that right, Rick? Spirituality? Absolutely. Leonard, um, I, I got to congratulate the both of you on a great book, an important book, by the way, I think. And um, I, I, I've got to stop talking, got to stop waxing here. And, and let you get, tell us about number four, spirituality. Well, thank you so much, uh, John and Art, for uh, having us on here. We, This has been such an enjoyable uh, process of uh, being with you. Uh, spirituality. So I, I think of a quote by uh, Carl Jung, who's a um, well-known analyst. And he, he said, spirituality of some kind is absolutely necessary for psychological growth. And it's so true that spirituality, uh, some kind of a connection with a higher power, I, I think of Star Wars, you know, the Force, Luke, the, the Force. Well, they're really saying that we do have a intimate connection with a higher power, something greater than us. And it's important for us to recognize that and to develop a connection with this inner um, source, the force 
that um, is is part of all creation. I had the benefit of I was I was in a Catholic seminary for eight years, four years of high school, four years of college, and you know it was, a, it was the Catholic seminary, and I learned um, really we, we had to do a lot of meditation and prayer, and that was my first really beginning of really connecting with this. Um, something other than my ego. And I'd like to just talk about six stages of um, spiritual development that we really uh, encourage men to, to, to explore and go through. And the first stage is, is adaptation. You know, when we're, when we're, when we're born and we, we start adapting to this world, to the material world, and as we adapt, we start getting further away from our true self, our connection with this uh, uh, higher power. And then we become orphans. Orphans meaning we're, we're, we're not really connected with this higher power. And that's when we, we have wake-up calls to wake up. Let's wake up and, and start to realize that we do have this connection uh, with the Force. And I always think of the Star Wars episode where Obi-Wan Kenobi was helping Luke connect with the Force. In many ways, that's what we're trying to do for us men to be connected to the force so that we have a uh, greater connection with creation, with intuition, with something that is, is greater than us. And as we do this, we can start breaking free and really, really get more connected to our heart. Because I always believe that when we're really connected to the soul, to, the, to this force, this higher power, we really are more connected with our heart. And from our heart, we can connect with other human beings, soul to soul, heart to heart. And that's what we're encouraging men to do in deepening this connection. Yeah. Thank you, Leonard. Um, I'd like to share a story about my own spiritual practice. And before I do that, I want to make clear to your audience that spirituality and religion are not the same thing. They can be in certain circumstances, but many of us who are spiritual beings do not practice any kind of religion. It's about a one-to-one -one relationship with that higher power, or as Leonard was calling it, the force. When I was seven years old, my parents uh, separated for the first time and they left the Catholic church. I was baptized as a Catholic. I went to Catholic schools up to that time. And they joined a Church of Self-Realization Fellowship, which actually comes out of Encinitas, California, Yogananda, uh, and, and my whole life was turned around. Instead of praying, I began to meditate. I stopped eating meat, became a vegetarian. Um, instead of reading the Bible, we read books like Autobiography of a Yogi, books about Eastern philosophy. And I began to embrace my spirituality in a way that I never had before. So I've been meditating now for almost 65 years. Um, and it's become part of my daily practice. It's very important. We'll talk a little more about that later in the, in the session. Um, but how does living a spiritual life help us as men, and how do we embrace spirituality? That's the question. Well, the first step in that is uncovering the messages or beliefs that deny our sacredness. We talked in the last session about how we got many messages that we weren't okay as human beings, as men. Uh, if we expressed feelings, we were beat down and things like that. So we begin to deny our own sacredness. And of course, if that happens, we can't really connect with our spirituality. The first step. The second step is recognizing ourselves as sacred and worthy of being loved. Of course, no one can really make me love myself. I have to start with loving myself first, and then I can take in love from Leonard and you, John, and, and you, Art, and other, and other men and women in my life. I have to recognize that I'm sacred and worthy of being loved. The third step is to move towards a healthier, integrated spirituality as a whole, holy man. Again, that takes practice. That's why we advocate for a men starting a daily practice. The fourth step is to grow from the inside out through a daily practice of meditation or journaling or whatever it is that brings us to a sense of connection with something larger than ourselves. The fifth and final step is connecting with elders in a spiritual community to recognize that there are people that are wiser than I am, that I can learn from them and gain from them. One of the best ways to do that, of course, is to get into a men's group. 
where I have a whole circle of elders that I learn from every single week. Once we do that, then the next step is to create a daily spiritual practice. And Leonard, why don't we talk about those those behaviors? Maybe we can alternate. Yeah, so, you know, uh, I haven't been meditating as long as Rick. I've only been meditating 40 years. And uh, so, <laughs> but, you know, I, I start the day in meditation. That's uh, the first thing I do. And I love to meditate. I love to meditate. And in my, I use a mantra, and I use the word love. So I inhale love, and I exhale love. And that's how I start my day. I'm just breathing in love, exhaling in love. And that's, that's to me, that starts my day with, a, with a, a connection with myself, with this energy of love, and also a, a feeling of deep inner peace. That's one of my go-to places right at the very beginning. How about you, Rick? What's, what's another one that you use? Well, I always start my, my morning practice with some deep breathing. I'm a, a breath worker. I, I've learned how to do rebirthing, and that instantly puts me into a receptive meditative state. And from that receptive meditative state, I try to connect into the way in which my life is blessed and mysterious. I have health. I have tremendous friends. I have a mission to, to do work in the world. I have work to do, like writing and speaking to friends groups and so forth. And that brings me to this deep sense of gratitude that I have. And that opens up the next step, Leonard. Well, you know, just from the gratitude is uh, having a gratitude journal, journal or, um, or just listing the things that I'm grateful for. You know what I do often when I'm talking with people? I know Rick and I do this when we have our weekly meetings at the end. We, we say, well, let's end on appreciation. Rick, I want to appreciate you for, um, you know, the work that you've done, et cetera. So we end on an appreciation, and, and the appreciation builds this connection as well, uh, to be grateful for what we have going. And, and fortunately, we live in California, and boy, I, I feel so grateful for the climate and, and just uh, the opportunity of living where I am. Now, how about you, Rick? Got another one? Yeah, that brings us to our last uh, step, and that's to recognize the sacred and beautiful relationships that we're in. Uh, Leonard and I are both very grateful to be in partnership with amazing women. Um, so my lover's being fully fulfilled. I have a fabulous family. My daughter, my granddaughters were here last weekend, for example. Tremendous friends. I have friends all over the world. And, and co-workers like Leonard were very, very close. And sometimes even strangers we have these loving connections with. So that helps sort of solidify my connection to the world and make me feel like a, a, a fully valued and worthy spiritual being. And you know, uh, the key is, you know, we're talking about spirituality and as we are connected to the force, uh, we, it takes us to a different type of a force, which will be the next uh, topic that we'll be covering, and that is sexuality. Oh, a cue for us to come back in, huh? <laughs> Art, you looks like uh, you perked up your ears at the word sexuality. Absolutely. Um, guys, this is this is an amazing series of videos. I want to thank you for doing that with us, breaking your book down uh, into the uh, power tools that we're talking about. So many uh, tools that you mentioned in this episode, for instance. Um, I think people need to know that if they're interested. There's a lot more in the book. Right. Um, your book is just chock full of great information, wonderful human stories, and certainly um, it's a workbook in, in, on another dimension. You give us uh, not only tools to work with, but you give us at the end of each chapter, you give us a list of exercises or stretches, if you will, stretch your Stretch yeah. yourself. I want, I, want to, I want to suggest to our audience that basically what you're seeing is the video cliff notes of power tools for men. Yeah. So if you like the cliff notes, yeah. the full novel is, is worth the read. So thank you guys for uh, giving us exposure to them. And um, uh, for many of our people, uh, I 
encourage everybody in the audience, if you've missed the first three episodes, uh, or if you now, you happen to pick this up and all eight are done, there's going to be a playlist on the Celebrating Act 2 YouTube channel, and uh, you'll be able to watch them all. You can binge watch them, okay? Uh, now that the, the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is over, you were wondering what's next to do. So uh, you can certainly binge watch them. But thank you very much for giving us a taste of what this is all about. Really important information uh, because uh, today, for a lot of men, we read about uh, all the, the mass murders, which are pretty much by men, uh, and that uh, we're expecting that men are, uh, can't really be in touch with their feelings. And you make a myth of all that stuff, is that men really can have feelings and care about one another. Uh, and uh, this is a great guidebook for that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Art and John. We really appreciate being here. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.